A blow to the Aubrey family as they prepare to mark two years since Ahmad Aubrey was shot and killed while jogging in his neighborhood. They are devastated after federal prosecutors reached a plea deal with two of the three men facing hate crimes charges in the death of the 25-year-old. A judge has since rejected the plea agreement for Travis McMichael, but she has yet to rule on the deal for his father, Gregory McMichael. They were set to stand trial next week, just months after they were convicted by a nearly all-white jury in Aubrey's murder. Their neighbor, William Bryan, was also convicted. The McMichaels were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole earlier this month. Brian was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of, of parole. Here's what Ahmad's mother, Wanda Cooper Jones, had to say before the men were sentenced in the state case for her son's death. These men deserve the maximum sentence for their crimes. Ahmad never said a word to them. He never threatened them. He just wanted to be left alone. They were, fully, they were fully committed to their crimes. Let them be full, let them be fully committed f for the consequences. Your Honor, I'm standing here before you as the mother of Ahmaud Arbery, asking you to please give all three defendants who are responsible for the death of my son the maximum punishment in this court which I do believe is life behind bars without the possible chance for parole. Thank you. Cooper Jones has been against any type of plea deal after this video was released, proving that the men chased Aubrey while he was jogging in his neighborhood in Brunswick, Georgia. The men have maintained their innocence, and the attorneys say they will appeal the state ruling. Right now, we don't know the details of the federal plea deal for the McMichaels, but an attorney for the family says they oppose the agreement and will fight it. In a statement, Cooper Jones says, The U.S. Department of Justice has gone behind my back to offer the men who murdered my son a deal to make their time in prison easier for them to serve. I have made it clear at every possible moment that I do not agree to offer these men a plea deal of any kind. I have been completely betrayed by the DOJ lawyers. So what could this federal plea deal look like following the conviction of these three men? Criminal defense attorney Sue Ann Robinson is joining us again tonight with more insight. She's handled thousands of cases during her time as the assistant state attorney in the felony trial unit for the 17th Judicial Circuit in Florida. Sue Ann, thank you for joining us. All three men were sentenced earlier this month in the state case, life in prison, with Brian given the possibility of parole. Although a judge right. has rejected the plea deal for Travis McMichael for these federal hate crime charges, what are the chances that he will plead guilty in the case, and do you think the judge will also reject the charges against Gregory McMichael? Well, the charges are not being affected. They still have a state they still have their state convictions. They're still gonna do their life without parole and life with the chance of parole for Bryant. That's not gonna change. Those are gonna be there. That's, that's a done deal. They can appeal or do whatever they want, but their sentences and their convictions in the state case are sealed. With respect to the federal case, obviously they could face very high penalties up to 50 years in prison or another life in prison sentence. The difference is if they take a plea deal, they don't go through a trial, number one. And number two, um, in the plea deal, they would get to serve the federal sentence first, which means they would be housed in a max custody violent offender federal prison for 30 years and then can go serve their state time in a state prison. Mm. I, I wanna read you this tweet uh, from civil rights attorney Lee Merritt, one of the attorneys for Aubrey's family. He says, by admitting they were motivated by hate when they hunted and murdered Ahmaud Aubrey, these men get to transfer to safer, less crowded, and more orderly federal detention facilities. In essence, they get to publicly brag about their hatred and then be rewarded by the federal government. Does this move by prosecutors ultimately take away from justice being served? 
Well, if, if the definition of justice is that they are in the most, you know, putrid possible conditions, then yes. You know, state prisoners obviously feel like the conditions they're living in are terrible. And so do max custody violent offenders. I'm sure they would say, you know, they have really bad conditions. I think that based on the fact that, you know, um, the Cooper family, the uh, Wanda Cooper feels like the federal time would be easier and the facilities better. She doesn't want that. I also think she wants for us as a country to have to go through the paces of the federal hate crime trial where the state has to prove up the racial animus as opposed to them just having uh, you know, a plea deal where that doesn't have to be demonstrated. I think she's really trying to, you know, make sure that this case and the murder of her son is cemented in our legal legacy and hopefully never happens again. She has been, and uh, his mother uh, has been uh, very engaged and very vocal throughout. I'm curious, what will fighting all of this look like for the family? What are their options? Right. It will, if they go through a trial, it would look very similar to what we just witnessed, except it would have, the state would have the added burden of proving up that the reason why they took these actions was based on racial animus. So that would be the difference. The state, the federal government has already said that in order for them to take a plea deal, especially in a case so sensitive like this, they will take into consideration the victim's wishes. And so they felt like they took into consideration the, the mother of Ahmaud Arbery's wishes. She said that she doesn't want to plea. She's not comfortable with that. And the judge has rejected the plea deal. I think now it's just going to be a matter of, you know, they're at the mercy of kind of whether or not these defendants want to plea open and see what happens or whether they're going to go through a trial. You know, it's interesting because Ahmad's mother says that she feels completely betrayed by prosecutors. And yet, you know, you're sharing with us that they said, oh, yeah, we took into consideration what her wishes were. Is there what what does the precedent look like for prosecutors actually going ahead with what the family asked them to do? I think traditionally that's, you know, what happens. I think if there's issues with the case or there's concerns with the case, there's always, you know, the state has more information about what their case is than, than the general public do. So if they have a reason why they're entering into a plea, other than it's more convenient for um, the McMichaels and Mr. Bryant, then obviously, you know, they can make that call. They're just, they're taking into consideration the victim's wishes you know, obviously because the victim's family's wishes, but they don't have to make the final call. It's not every day that we get to see a uh, federal hate crimes uh, trial play out in the public sphere. What, what would you expect that that would look like and why, as you said, even just symbolically, the family would want that uh, to happen in the public sphere for us all to you know, be privy to? Right. I think it's an important case because it's going to give us, you know, attorneys in the civil rights space, the blueprint of what the state has to prove up and what exact evidence is going to be demonstrative of that to a jury. And I think that would help other cases. I also think it will act as a deterrent, which really, you know, if I could read Ms. Wanda Cooper's mind, obviously she's concerned and wants them to be um, you know, punished to the max for what they did to her son. But I think at the end of the day, she's also looking to the community and saying, listen, if my, what happened to my son can affect the future and make it better and be a deterrent, if this, if the sentence in the case could be a deterrent, then I think she would want that as well. Mm. Criminal defense attorney, Sue Ann Robinson. Thank you so much for your insights and for joining us tonight on Amplified. Appreciate it.